Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we are honored to have a wonderful friend and fantastic artist uh, visit us today in Aaron Krueger. Welcome, Aaron. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, it's <laughs> good practice for Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> that Joe Rogan. Uh, good looking bald guy to you. Yeah. Well, you know, Aaron is a, a very special friend, like I mentioned. I, I personally um, have collected her work uh, for many years. I must have about 20, 30, I don't know. It's a lot of paintings, huh? Um, but I appreciated it right off the bat, the first time I saw it um, at Steve Park's gallery in Taos, New Mexico. In fact, I, the first piece I bought of Aaron's was from Steve Park's, and it was of an uh, Ecuadorian shoe, shoe shiner. And uh, it has served as an inspirational piece to me for all the time that I've had it. Uh, mostly I've had it in my exercise room because it has so many inspirational words in, in the refuge that you use uh, to apply. And uh, it's gotten me through some good, good times and tough times. Um, we'd like, Erin, to first off uh, tell us about where you're from and how you got started into this art journey. And then how, what gave you the idea to uh, approach art the way you do? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I grew up in New England, and drawing was my first love. It, I was drawing before I could walk or talk. My mom still has a drawing I made when I was less than a year old. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And um, it, I just quickly realized that that was my gift that I could make you know, family members happy and, and my, my childhood friends. And um, it, drawing ended up getting me out of a lot of scrapes and, and um, saving my butt a bunch of times. <laughs> like in high school, I, um, I aced physics because I did a life-size painting of Albert Einstein. And oh, nice. And I, um, I aced law because I did a, this whole suite of drawings illustrating crime, you know, arson, robbery, burglary. And um, I was like the go-to artist for just anybody's, a friend's band or theater or like I did the senior banner. And so it was always kind of a way to like connect, like to contribute. I went to university for theater design for costume and scene painting and set, theater design and technical here in Santa Fe, at College of Santa Fe. And again, um, I quickly realized, even though I was a costume design major, like I couldn't sew worth the crap, but I could draw and paint. So again, they put me to work on on um, doing sets and painting costumes, distressing costumes. And I realized much later in retrospect that that theater background you can see in my work because I use trash and packaging that I collect all over the world. And from a distance, it looks like a painting, but you get up close and you realize it's cigarette packs and cereal boxes. It's collage with painting right. integrated, right? Yeah, in the same way that in the theater, we would we'd take a piece of plywood and make it into a marble staircase, or we'd make like styrofoam look like brick. And so it's, I think it has a similar magic of, of theater. One other thing um, that I noticed about Erin uh, one year she, she visited us in Chicago when we were doing uh, Chicago Sofa, her and Anthony. And um, uh, Anthony was Aaron's life partner and he passed away a couple years ago. But what, what impressed me was that this young lady, uh, Aaron, was always visually recording everything around her. And she carries these, these little journals around and she paints on them, does sketches, expresses her thoughts. 
takes pictures, collect, put little trash pieces in there sometimes. Tell us about your journals. What, what gave you that idea to start journaling like that? Um, well, I brought a couple actually, because I thought it might come up in conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've always kept these travel journals. I just, I'm trying to set a mood, you know, mm -hmm. and celebrate women off and like feminine grace and yeah. strength. And yeah, and I sketch people like friends that I have dinner with, um, Chinupa's lecture. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've been keeping these my whole life. I mean, as a three or four year old, I had books that I'd, I'd draw and sketch. And, and I love it because it, it really puts you in the moment, takes you out of your your mind and the past and the future and you become truly present and i find that if you're just snapping photos of a place that it's it's so different from when you have to actually sit down and breathe and focus and really take in like by rendering you that memory becomes part of you in a visceral way like i have so many so many memories traveling of that of when i'm sitting drawing you really like take in the the mood and the climate and the people around you and the sounds and smells and then when you're drawing a person i think it's a similar way of like truly seeing somebody like people really everybody wants to be seen and often i find that most people have not ever been drawn. I've drawn so many people my whole life that that had never been drawn before and it's kind of a big deal because it's like you're you're really having to focus and truly see the other and take time to render them and and well, which I been, think uh, is a beautiful thing. You even took time to uh, do a rendering of me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> many times. <I> yeah, <laughs> so that's cool. And I, I know uh, you did a, a little uh, painting that went up for auction one time, and my my wife really wanted that. And uh, but one of my best clients was like, "No, I'm getting it." So I, I just have to wait. I'll maybe get it back. Yeah, it's intimate. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, one one thing uh, that I want to retouch what we talked about is Erin travels. It, 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 she travels in the United States, but she travels all over the world. Tell us some of the countries you've you've uh, traveled to, and also how when you travel, where did you stay? Boy, I've been all over, all over Latin America. I really love South America and Central America and Europe and Asia. I like to travel humbly. I've kind of traveled on a shoestring for 25 years, kind of purposely, even if I have the money to stay at a nicer place, I, I purposely want to kind of live as best I can how the people in the place are living, like get below the surface. So you're, living, you're, you're hanging out in the like barrios and all that? Not as a package tourist, you know? Yeah. But since I was a little girl, like five or six years old, I'd look at this map of the world and just, I wanted, I couldn't wait to see firsthand like what's out there and how people live. And I love just, kind of simple little guest houses. Some of them even have a shared bathroom and um, often I'll rent an apartment and stay longer, like a month or two and cook. And then I go to the fruit and vegetable markets and just meet people. You're immersing yourself in the culture. Mm -hmm. that, that was a beautiful thing. I, I think um, one of the funnest uh, experiences that I, I, well, when you came back uh, you educated me uh, about the tuk-tuk drivers. What I find interesting, especially in the Asian countries, is their perception of Western culture. Mm -hmm. Describe the tuk-tuk drivers. Yeah, they, that surprised me too. There's this whole tuk-tuk scene in like Thailand, Cambodia, and Laos that um, began, began to really remind me of the lowrider scene here in Española and Chimayo, New Mexico. And 
the they really like trick out their tuck tucks and and they're a great um artists who paint like elaborate designs like they do here on the antique cars. I and think I, I think I saw in one of your journals a, a drawing of a tuk-tuk driver dressed as a cowboy. Mm-hmm. Right? They're very into um, westerns, old westerns. <laughs> That's I kept interesting. talking to these different guys and they, they love cowboy movies. And so yeah, they emulate that with western shirts and cowboy boots and hats and everything. Yeah, I, that is pretty cool and fun. Um, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about some of the subject matters that we, we've started talking a little bit about Tuk Tuk Drivers. Um, uh, lately, um, it, it, and especially for this current show, um, you were commissioned uh, by the Flamenco Society um, to do a yeah, poster for their the annual event. International Flamenco Festival. Oh, nice. And where's yeah. that held at? It's um, held in Albuquerque, and yeah, I was very honored to create a painting for them. Is it this painting uh, behind you over here? Yeah. Nice. That's very beautiful. Oh, thanks. So there's going to be a mixture of paintings with uh, inspired by flamenco and. Yeah, all my work I use um, collage materials to reference the story. Mm -hmm. So in the background, for example, there's like Lotteria cards of El Musico, and there's um, a torn um, bullfighting poster from Juarez, and lots of reference to New Mexico, too. Yeah. I noticed you also did a mariachi painting that's your signature piece that came out beautiful. We don't, uh, maybe Leah will post a, a image as we're talking. Uh, but that's that's that came out very beautiful. Um, the other thing that I've noticed uh, lately is the uh, MMA fighters. Oh yeah. Well, oh wait, show us the poster. Talk show, about yeah, that, show I'll the, just show you. Yeah, the, show us the poster. This is the how the poster came out. Nice, beautiful. Thanks. And yeah, you could see all the little pieces of collage material. I like the tattoo on the shoulder there of the bull. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> that came out really cool. <laughs> the ladies that commissioned it, they, one of them, Ava, it was a real process. It's real collaboration because they all have different ideas of what they really wanted to include and embody in, in flamenco. Um, but she said, ultimately, she said, just make her fierce, <laughs> whatever you do. <laughs> so, I so think, she looks fierce. I think I did that. Yeah, yeah, you got the eyes and everything down. And I'm very honored because they've asked me to do a piece for next year's festival. Oh, as cool. Well. Yeah. Well, that yeah. would be an interesting challenge. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's always nice. Uh, I think our, our one of our last uh, podcasts we interviewed Dennis Aminsky, and he had he had done the the posters for the uh, Super Bowl mm -hmm. in 1995, and then 2007 he did the poster for the Kentucky Derby. But oh, those nice. are those are some highlight points for artists, you know, to yeah. uh, get their work out in a broader way. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your inspiration on the MMA fighters. Well, I've been doing martial arts um, pretty much my whole adult life and um, in style Bakwa. And so that dimension of it, um, really interests me, mixed martial arts, um, people who dedicate their lives to that and are, are great fighters. I, I find it, um, well, I really admire them because it's like, it takes a level of commitment, dedication, but it's more than, you know, some people think of it as for its violent aspects, but to me, it's more, of an art form it takes all this imagination and skill and kind of um responding to the energy of the other in the same way that that you do with like tango dancing or any kind of dance which i also love and so it's a creative sport but it's also um it's so much more it's like a lot of martial arts are are internal practices as well and there's about, a lot of strategy in what they're doing uh, they have to really think ahead of the curve yeah yeah exactly it's helped me especially in traveling just 
be very observant of everything around me and kind of just be able to carry myself, like move within thousands of people on a metro or staircase or in a square and really observe what's what's around me and, and kind of not bump into people, just something as simple as that, you know, like be aware of, of um, myself in my body in the moment. So I, I like all of that. Yeah, and I, I, I also noticed on, on the MMA stuff that most of them are, are girls, women, female, mm -hmm. female athletes that are really tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine the training that they get through. I, I follow uh, Holly Holm, which you actually did a painting of Holly yeah, Holm. Yeah, she's But uh, I, if you watch her workouts, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is mm -hmm. crazy what they go through to prepare for these fights. and um, It takes a lot of passion and, mm -hmm. um, and humility, too, and sacrifice and... Um, it's admirable and then well like you were saying how tough the women are but I love how like uh, Valentina behind you and her sister Antonina they also embody they're tough and they're feminine yeah and that's interested me through the whole course of my career that because um, I feel that often women are are kind of meant to feel that we can't be both that that if you're feminine and if you wear makeup or dresses or or um you're soft spoken that that you can't be strong and tough or vice versa like if you're gonna lead a country or or you know be a mayor or the head of a school or or whatever it is that you can't be feminine and be taken seriously and so that's been an ongoing theme of my work. I like to show women that that are that highlight their beauty and femininity and at the same time they, they're fierce, like the mm -hmm. flamenco lady. Well I noticed you did one guy one time, a boxer, Johnny Tapia. Yeah. <laughs> what inspired you about Johnny Tapia? Well, I love his story and actually he that may have even been the impetus of this new series, Passion, Pathos, and Human Potential, because he certainly embodies it more than anyone. He, because um, he, his childhood, I won't get into it here, it's just too it's, it's deep and tragic mm -hmm. and dark. It's like um, the worst possible things you can imagine, like horrors that happen to his mother, father, family and as a little boy and um he parlayed that into uh boxing and and totally transformed he became like the champion of the world and one of the best fighters and even though he struggled of course with addiction all sorts of things he nonetheless like parlayed and transformed everything dark into um something like truly remarkable and admirable and then shared that he'd go around to school systems and and um talk to young kids and help them box and teach and that's kind of what this whole new series is focused on what so, i what i remembered about johnny tapio because I, I loved watching his fights mm -hmm. and he'd he'd find a way to win and at the end of the fight he'd climb the ropes and he'd say, I love you, Grandpa, I love you, Grandma, you know, every time. And I, I just yeah. start laughing because he said it, you know, like he's from Española, you know, it was, it was uh, really yeah. good. It made me feel good as a New Mexican. Yeah. Uh, but his struggles, oh boy, uh, really hard. But I, I was happy you, you, you did a piece of him. Uh, yeah. Those, those are real important. It's the kind of story that interests me most, especially yeah. now, like with what, this whole past year, it's um, it's been challenging for a lot of people on a lot of different levels, and there have been some benefits to the positive things to the whole thing also, but um, but definitely challenging, and so I really want to focus on like, well, what are our passions that keep us all afloat? Because all humans struggle, no matter how rich or beautiful or whatever or how many loved ones they have like you know we're all mortal we all are subject to um 
whatever, like typhoons and fires and droughts and um, passing of loved ones, or we're all these fragile kind of uh, creatures, like moving around in a bag of water and bone and blood, and <laughs> and like it's a miracle we're all here. And so I, I've really been focused on well, what kinds of things like make people transcend that suffering that we all go through. Oh, I, I think that's wonderful that um, you're presenting the work and, and this, this does come across in um, you know, that, that sense of perfection, especially with social media today. You don't even know what anybody looks like. You just assume everybody's beautiful all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, or, but we're, we, are, we are all flawed creatures uh, trying to do our best. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think um, we would like to have you over again for another podcast uh, oh, yeah, in the future. Honored. And we'll, we'll <laughs> pick some subjects. Um, but I, I thought this was a good opportunity for people to get to know you a little better. And um, it's a starting point. Um, and Aaron, we are honored to have you. I uh, really admire your work. And I hope, I, I hope you know that. I, uh, my house is like a homage to Aaron Krieger. So <laughs> maybe we'll go do a podcast at the house one of these days. Um, we'll go to Joe Rogan together. Yeah. <laughs> Take That's him funny. by storm. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Aaron for coming today. I'd uh, like to invite everybody to her show, which opens on September 10th from 5 to 7 here at Blue Rain Gallery. Um, going to have to find some mariachis or something. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe to our podcast at blueraingallery.com or any of the platforms like Spotify or iTunes. Um, also like to encourage everybody to go to blueraingprintshop.com to experience art in your everyday life. Thanks. Thank you.